Uh, to the weather briefing from Germany, from the training center here in the sunny Langen. We are sitting here um, between Frankfurt and Darmstadt. Most of you know this place, I think. Um, and today, um, you see in the image, I have a big support from young and motivated students. Uh, and uh, they will show you uh, different things besides the actual weather. Um, and this is uh, Alex, Oliver, and Nina. Um, and so I will give the, uh, the microphone now to Alex. Wally, he will uh, speak about the actual weather from today. One moment, please. Okay, so thank you, Peter. Um, I'd also like to welcome everybody here to the weather briefing. My name, as already said, is Alex Worley. My co-hosts today are my uh, fellow students, Oliver Reuter and uh, Nina Fuchs. And on our way through today's weather briefing, we'll be stumbling across some very interesting topics today, starting with uh, today's weather. And also uh, having a look back at the weather we had uh, here in Europe and also um, mostly over Germany. In June, um, we'll be looking at some supercells over Germany on June 11th. And also, we'll be having a look at the identification of cloud microphysics um, on June 19th. So, but first of all, I'd like to know where you guys are all from. Just mark where you're from here on the map, please. Okay, so I see we have some from Portugal, UK, <laughs> us four in the training center here in Lang. Some from Italy, from Rome, north of Rome. Very nice. Okay, let's go on. Here in uh, Lang, we have mostly sunny conditions. And this is a picture, a webcam photo from uh, near uh, Frankfurt today, from this morning. But um, right now, we also have some uh, few uh, yeah, harmless uh, convective clouds uh, in the sky. And northern parts of Germany have had uh, some more uh, cloudiness um, this morning already. And uh, looking at the southern part of Germany, um, they've had uh, convective uh, clouds uh, already this morning. Let's look at um, the air mass uh, RGB and also in uh, composite uh, with uh, the geopotential height in 500 hectopascal. As you can see, there's an um, upper low um, on the Atlantic, just uh, west of the Bay of Biscay, and also an upper low um, influencing um, the eastern parts of Europe, um, mostly uh, the, the south uh, eastern parts of uh, Europe. And in between these two lows, there's a, a ridge um, influencing um, Spain, France, uh, UK, and also parts of Germany as well. Uh, so we have um, very fair weather conditions over the central parts of, of Europe. Um, the frontal zone is very far uh, in the north. Um, also in this area, you can see that um, we have this um, convergence of the, the reddish and bluish colors. In this area, also, um, the jet stream is located. Um, also, what we can see in the air mass composite is that um, within the uh, ridge, there's a rather warm air mass, whereas um, in the northern parts, especially here, 
um, towards uh, Russia. We have a uh, cooler air mass, and also um, in the east of uh, Germany here, we have uh, a second uh, jet stream. As there is another uh, part that divides the bluish um, colors towards the west and uh, the, the the red um, downdrafting um, parts of the jet uh, towards the east. In the vicinity of um, the upper lows, you can also see that they, there is uh, way more cloudiness, um, as you can see by the uh, whitish colors uh, here over the Atlantic, but also here over the um, southeastern parts of uh, Europe. Um, the reddish color here towards uh, Turkey, um, are implied um, by the, the warm um, temperatures uh, of the surface. Uh, so um, this, this is not uh, an area of uh, downdrafting as uh, would be implied by the reddish color in the air mass RGB. have a look uh, at uh, the wind speeds at 300 hectopascals. You can see that um, we have high wind speeds in, in the areas uh, I, I said we have the uh, jet stream located. Also looking at uh, temperatures um, in five, at 500 hectopascals um, in composite with the IR 10.8 you can see uh, the cool temperatures in the upper atmosphere within the uh, upper lows, um, and especially um, the upper low uh, influence in the eastern parts of Europe. It's very cool temperatures, um, around uh, minus 20 degrees Celsius, um, causing uh, atmospheric instability as um, temperatures and the lower surfaces uh, increase. And also you can see that um, we have this warm air reaching uh, into the ridge uh, we saw earlier. Having a look at the dust RGB, uh, with uh, the uh, weather, you can see that there are thunderstorms in the vicinity of uh, the um, upper lows over the Atlantic and also over the southeastern parts of Germany. Um, also, the um, the Alpine region of Austria is. Um, is influenced with hail. As you can see here in the dust RGB, the, the red reddish color implies uh, thick clouds that also um, uh, imply um, precipitation clouds. Uh, and also you can see that um, this dark colors here over uh, Russia um, imply a cyrus and also we have um, a very um, very moist um, air mass um, in the lower stratosphere up to three kilometers uh, over Russia um, which you can see by the bluish color in this area uh, whereas the air mass over um, over uh, France is a little bit more drier at this point, but it will turn a blue as well as uh, moisture or humidity increases throughout uh, the day. Having a look at um, the uh, European storm forecast experiment, we have a, a chart that implies that there is a maximum of uh, the occurrence of thunderstorms over southeastern uh, parts of Europe. Uh, also, there's um, this area over the Czech Republic and uh, Austria uh, in which um, thunderstorms may occur 
and also uh, over Spain and the uh, Gulf of uh, Biscay, we have an area in which thunderstorms can occur, and these areas are all uh, um, all um, due to the um, the influence of uh, the upper lobes. Also have a, um, a loop of the HRV cloud RGB um, with the, the lightnings. Um, and you can see that there are um, thunderstorms already occurring uh, this morning um, over the Gulf of Biscay and parts of Spain, uh, mainly also um, over the south uh, eastern parts of Europe. Um, this morning we also had some uh, thunderstorms uh, over the Alpine region uh, of Austria. Another topic that I already read in uh, the chat is uh, the danger of forest fires in some parts of Europe. Um, <coughs> We have the chart from a media alarm uh, in which uh, there are different um, categories of uh, the, the danger of uh, fires. Uh, green is the least, uh, the least uh, dangerous uh, areas, and the more uh, reddish the color becomes, uh, the higher the chance is that um, fire uh, fires will occur. Um, here of the UK, you don't have any warnings for uh, fires. However, um, as we already read in the chat, how, um, fires actually do occur in the south, worth more east of uh, Manchester. And uh, this can also be seen in the day microphysics RGB um, by the um, by this bluish uh, cyan uh, color can see uh, the fires and there's a really strong signal in the R3.9 um, and uh, the smoke of the HRV uh, or the smoke of the fires can also be seen in the HRV cloud RGB however um, it's uh, not visible that good um, so we have this this um, this um, this yellowish area in which uh, we can see the, the smoke in the HRV cloud RGB. So um, coming to our second topic, um, the supercells over uh, Germany on uh, June 11th. First, uh, the weather situation we had on that day. Um, um, looking at the geopotential height in 500 hectopascal, uh, we have a uh, upper low over the uh, Gulf of Biscay, which uh, influenced um, uh, southern parts of, of Germany, and also uh, we have uh, warm air advection uh, causing uh, upward motion, uh, which uh, can be seen uh, by uh, the reddish uh, colors over uh, central and uh, southern parts of uh, Germany. And also, there's a uh, very um, moist and warm uh, air mass uh, over the southern uh, over southern parts of uh, Germany, as we can see here uh, at the uh, equivalent potential uh, temperatures uh, at 850 hectopascals. Um, and there's a, a very clear uh, line here um, separating a uh, mild air mass in the north from a uh, warm and moist air mass in the southern parts of Germany. In this area, we also had a waving a frontal system. Further south, there was also a convergence. Looking at the uh, wind shear from surface up to six kilometers uh, on the right image here, you can see that there hasn't been that much uh, wind shear on that day. We only have values from 15 to 20 meters per second um, 
However, um, the um, convective available potential energy over southern parts of Germany were relatively high, as you can see here by the, uh, the reddish colors. And having um, these, these areas of um, high energy um, in the same areas with, uh, combined with the, the shear, um, was enough to, to trigger um, very strong uh, convective uh, cells, um, which uh, clearly can be seen in the sounding of uh, Stuttgart from 12 UDC that day. And um, this uh, sounding is uh, very representative uh, for the southern parts of uh, Germany. Um, you can see that there is a very, uh, very much uh, convective uh, available potential energy, um, and this caused several um, supercells actually uh, to trigger over the central and also southern parts of Germany. So we're having a look at the uh, severe storms RGB, and um, here for your first task, just Mark the areas, uh, please, in which you expect a strong convection. And meanwhile, uh, I'll be passing the microphone to my colleague, student Oliver, and he'll be telling you if you were right or not. Thank you. So yeah, hello from my side to everyone. My name is uh, Oliver. Thank you, Alex, for your presentation. It was really good. And yeah, so you can highlight uh, the area where you expect one convection. See, may, uh, some of you expect strong convection in the central of Germany, just in this part here. Uh, so. Yes. Yes, Alex White. So, um, as you uh, can see, in the severe storm RGB or severe convection RGB, um, the yellowish color is a, a signal for some small uh, ice particles, and the red one or the reddish color here in this area would be more. Um, uh, large ice particles. So as you expect, white right over central Germany, uh, just in this area, there were uh, severe convection. Also, in the eastern parts of Europe, as you said here in this part, or over eastern Poland. Yeah. So let's uh, go further, and uh, I want to show you a little uh, movie with uh, the clouds, so the supercells or the thunderstorms developed over Germany on 11th June 2018. So as you can see in the morning hours, there was uh, or there were some low clouds, uh, mainly cumulus or stratocumulus over wide parts of Germany and in the noon and afternoon, yeah, many severe uh, thunderstorms developed mainly in the southern part of Germany. So as you can see, the yeah. So in the next image, you can see some uh, low clouds, uh, mainly cumulus or stratocumulus in the northern and eastern parts of Germany, and over the central of Germany, uh, developed some thunderstorms. Uh, you can see here and also uh, waving sewers from this cell. And uh, this cell, I will tell you, uh, was the strongest one on this day um, over Germany. And we have a, will have a look close to this cell now. So on the uh, next image, um, there's uh, the IR 10.8 enhanced. And you can see over this supercell here, uh, quite in the yeah, central part of Germany, a cold ring that implies a very uh, strong storm and severe storm and yeah, just a supercell. And you can see this red color here in this and it shows that there might be or there must be 
uh, very strong uh, updraft, so it's an uh, overshooting top and the temperature on the top of the cloud reaches um, minus 70 degrees, which is very, very cold, you guess. And uh, another cells are all the, over the western parts of Germany and also near the Czech Republic or near the Alps in this area here. Yeah. So uh, how everything started, this uh, city here is Frankfurt. Here, this is uh, Würzburg and Nuremberg. So we are in the uh, uh, central of Germany. And in the uh, noon hours, some convection started uh, with some lightnings at uh, 10.30 UTC. You can see three cells, uh, not the strong spot, uh, yeah, nice thunderstorms, I would say. And afterwards, uh, these cells over the mountain range of uh, the Odenwald, which is uh, located here in this area, these cells um, formed or developed into a huge supercell. You can see here just in this area, and also uh, it seems to be a hook echo here in this. Um, really nice to see in the uh, radar image. And this one was the strongest cell of uh, the three you could see. Uh, yeah. And this cell uh, moved eastward south of um, Würzburg and uh, got its uh, yeah strongest or the most, uh, its maximum at uh, 13 UTC. You can see in the typical V notch. Um, in this part here, the typical V, typical for supercells, and uh, also a very high maximum radar shows or goes up to uh, 65, up to 70 uh, dB set, so very high reflectivity for the cell and uh, the other cells, mainly uh, here in the northern part or in the south, weren't that strong on this day. Yeah, also shown the lightning. Uh, this was uh, the strong cell, I'd say, it, and uh, there were many, many lightnings, positive and negative, and uh, yeah, the cell moved to Nuremberg. Yes, yeah, you can see in the uh, cross section, uh, the cell yeah, reached uh, near the troposphere, so up to 12 kilometers and also develop large hail in the mid-level, as you can see in the violet color here, I, in the mid-level. Um, and uh, yeah, it uh, hints that uh, large hail is developed and also hail up to five and uh, six centimeters uh, were, was uh, reported, so it was a really severe thunderstorm on this day. Yeah, the next image is the Doppler radar. You can see the huge rotation in this area, also at uh, 13 UTC. And yeah, it also shows you that uh, it's a really nice supercell over the uh, central part of Germany in this day. Yeah, and the next uh, two images from the supercell taken from uh, Storm Chasers from Germany here. Uh, a photo taken from uh, Jonas Piontek uh, near Würzburg. You can see the huge wall cloud in this area and the mesocyclone upwards. And the downdraft behind the scene uh, shows that this uh, storm is really, really strong. And the next picture taken from uh, Boris Jordan, uh, also near Würzburg, but one hour later could also be taken in the United States on the Great Plains, but because uh, such a structure from a supercell you couldn't really see often in Germany. It's uh, really impressive, the supercell, and also the bluish color here in this area or in the downdraft, also a hint for large hail and huge or heavy precipitation. Yeah, that was all from my side, and uh, now my colleague Nina Fox will Continue. Thank you. Yes. Um, thank you, Oliver. Now Nina Fuchs is speaking. So I'd like to introduce you to the topic identification of Clyde microphysics. Uh, for this purpose, we use the weather situation from the 90s of June. 
this year. So the weather is or the weather generation is character characterized by a wearing frontal system over the Atlantic Ocean. Oh, uh, wrong. There, you can see the frontal system. And this varying yeah, frontal system is turning um, over the north of France into a warm front. And if we go on to the satellite image, as you can see that the warm front implies um, uh, much cloudiness over the parts of northern France and some western parts of Germany. And the satellite image, as you can see, is the day microphysique RGB. The prim primary aim uh, of this image is to provide uh, a complex cloud analysis and especially to separate ice from water phase. So in this RGB, the red channel um, is the width uh, 0.8, the green channel, the uh, IR uh, 3.9, but only the solar part, and for the blue channel, the channel I. Uh, uh, 10.8 is used. Below the satellite image, you can see um, the yes explanations uh, for the colors. So the pinkish color over North France and some western part of Germany uh, implies um, low thick water clouds with large particles. So uh, yes. So the pinkish color is a mix of red, uh, of red and blue. So the width uh, 0 0.8 has a high reflectivity, as you can see. And due to warm cloud top temperature, the uh, blue channel also um, has a high peak. So the reason why the peak of the uh, solar part of the IR 3.9 is that um, uh, with increasing particle radius, uh, albedo um, uh, decreases. Now if we look at the natural color RGB, and the same cloud uh, is now coloring in cyan. And cyan is a mix of blue and green, as you can see. And the uh, red channel has a low um, reflect reflection. And this has two causes. So um, on the one hand, um, the cloud has large um, uh, particles or the cloud contain uh, ice particles. So, in uh, summary, the day microphysics gives a better and clearly overview of cloud uh, microphysics. And yes, the the cloud uh, was a low warm stratus, as you can see also in the uh, sounding. Yes, uh, we'd like to say thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, you have now the chance to ask. We hope uh, you enjoy the, today's weather briefing.